so it's about intensity of practice. Yeah. And this passage in Guru Vachka Kavai just intrigued me. Um, when Bhagavan says, the act of communion with the self or remaining still inwardly is intense activity which is performed with the entire mind and without a break. And then he goes on to say, the sage is characterized by eternal and intense activity. His stillness is like the apparent stillness of a fast rotating top. Its very speed cannot be followed by the eye and so it appears to be still, yet it is rotating so is the apparent inaction of the sage. I mean, this right. for me is like, well, how, how can this be? This is the motionless Arunachala, and yet he's talking about intense activity. Okay. Uh, so oh. could you clarify that? And also, does that, have, does that have implications for our own intensity of practice, that we should be really intensifying our own practice? Thank you. Um, okay. Well, um, if we want real clarification, we have to turn within. That is, the real clarity comes only from within. Bhagavan sometimes talked in paradoxical way, in using paradoxical terms. He sometimes talked about doing without doing, seeing without seeing, knowing without knowing. So we, we, we shouldn't take the words just at face value. For example, that... Um, I referred earlier to um, the verse of uh, Akramlai, that is, I think, verse 15. Kannaku kannai kanindri kanune kanu vadevaparanachala. He says, being the eye to the eye, you see without eyes. So what's he mean? In what way does Arunachala see without eyes? Arunachala sees the reality of everything without seeing the appearance of anything. That's what Bhagavan means by seeing without seeing or knowing without knowing. Likewise, doing without doing. What is doing? Do, our real nature is not doing, but being. But doing is just, a, is just being viewed through the distorted eyes of ego. So it's only in the view of ego that there's action, that there's activity. But, but what the reality lying behind all the activity we see, if we look about the world, so many activities are going on, all kinds. What is the one reality behind all these activities? Pure being, as you say, Arunachala. Achala means unmoving. So the... the when Bhagavan talks about that intense activity, what he means is the reality behind all action is that intense being, that pure being I am. So that the activity Bhagavan is talking about is the doership, is the 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 do the the un, doing without doing. So it, it's not we shouldn't. We shouldn't equate it with activity in the sense in which he, he's talking about something much, much deeper here. What we see as doing is actually just being. And if we want to see everything as just being, we need to see ourselves as just being. If we turn our attention back within, we will see that being alone is the reality. There never was any, there never was any doer or any doing. The doer is ego. Uh, when we rise as ego, we seem to we, we identify ourselves with mind, speech, and body, and we seem to be doing so many activities. That is but what Bhagavan refers to as the intense activity, is the 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 actionless activity of just being as we actually are. Incidentally, what was that? Which verse number of Guru Kavai was that? Just so that it's... anyone who wants to refer to it can. Yes, it's number 1186. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay, thank was, you, Michael. Was that a clear explanation? Did it make sense, what I said? Um, it does make sense. It does. Yeah. It uh, makes sense when we um, view this kind of through the eyes of ego rather than actually um, seeing that I am what it is. Yes, um, yes. And, and um, it just reminds me also of St. Paul when he says, um, pray without ceasing. And also the first commandment of Jesus when he says, you know, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, strength, and soul. You know, it, there is that, there's nothing else apart yeah, from yeah. the self, is there? How, how can we pray ceaselessly? 
even if you are able to pray ceaselessly throughout waking and dream, how can you pray ceaselessly in sleep? If you take prayer to be an activity, you cannot pray ceaselessly. Ceaseless prayer means being as we actually are. Then only can pray. What is ceaseless is only being. So when Bhagavan says that we, Bhagavan defines Atma Vichara as Sada Kalamum, uh, Manate, Atma, uh, uh, always keeping the mind fixed in oneself, that alone is what is called Atma Vichara, he says in the 16th paragraph of Nana. So why does he say always? Because our nature is to always be, the only thing that is always is our being. So if we're holding on to our being, we are always that. It's only when we rise as ego that time and space and everything else comes into existence. So if we want to sink deep into ourself, we need to hold on to ourself so firmly that our self-attentiveness becomes eternal. Because self that, that pure self-awareness is our very nature. <laughs>